Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 212. This episode is with Sifu Tracy Fleming. He's a world champion martial artist, a fight choreographer, and honestly, one of the coolest people I've ever trained with. Tracy and I met back in October of 2023 when he was teaching a stunt workshop alongside Ryan Watson. And let me tell you, I knew from the moment we met, I had to have him on the show, and, uh, well, here he is. In this episode, we talk about him training in martial arts from the time he was six years old, being inspired by Bruce Lee, learning different styles of kung fu, competing and winning gold in China, how he got into fight choreography, performing in the Mortal Kombat live show tour, hiding in bleachers to meet Pat Johnson, the spiritual side of martial arts, and so much more. Tracy is such a well of knowledge and inspiration, and I am so excited for you all to get to know him. So, let's just get right into it. Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 212, with Tracy Fleming. Theme song time! Brian, how you doing? Good seeing you. Yeah, back at you. How you been? I've been doing great, man. Been, you know, busy. Yeah? yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I like being busy. How about you? Oh yeah. Well, you know, it, it depends on what type of busy it is. You know. Fair yeah. point. Fun busy, or it could be hard. You know, working hard busy. But I try to make sure I stay busy with fun busy. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I hear you. If you don't like doing what you're doing, then the busy takes longer. It feels like. Yes, it does. It does. Definitely. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Are you? Because you're. Are you in Virginia? Yes, I'm in Virginia. I'm in Richmond, Virginia. Nice. I was born in the Outer Banks. Oh, okay. Wow. That's not far. Not super far. I lived yeah. on a farm out there in North Carolina before I moved to Florida. Oh, wow. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been living in Florida for? Oh, too long. I'm, re- I'm ready to leave it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Florida is unique, though. I mean, it's not a lot of places like Florida. <laughs> That's true. That is true. I, I like to say that Florida is the Australia of the states. It's its exactly. own thing that doesn't really connect with anything else. And mm-hmm. it's anything goes, it feels like. It, yes, it has its own animals, its own species, uh, uh-huh. everything. Yeah, it's, it's all... Humans and otherwise. <laughs> yeah, the news is entertaining. You can just look at the news and, and, yeah. and be, wow, I, you know, I've never seen this anywhere else. But this is it's awesome. Yeah, we got our own Florida man. Yeah. You know, we, we earn our headlines. <laughs> but I feel like as long as I don't become a Florida man headline, I've I've escaped un unfazed. You know what I mean? That's the goal is to not be that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah definitely. Are you from Virginia? Uh, yeah, I'm from Richmond, Virginia. But I, I, I lived in Florida. My experience in Florida, I started going there around 14 years old to train at the temple of uh, Master Chan Corey, the Waddle Temple in Orlando. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's where I met, that's where I met Ryan Watson at. Oh, okay. When yeah. you're 14, really? Because yeah. I, I know you started martial arts training like super young. Yes, I started martial arts when I was six. You were six. Then, yeah, I started when I was six. But I wasn't too serious, you know. During that time, it was the Bruce Lee era. So ah, sure, yeah. It was, uh, you know, you had, like, all the theaters downtown. My mother used to drop me and my older brother off. And it'd be triple double features. And she would she'd drop us off at 12 o'clock during the day. And we would not be ready to call it until 12 o'clock at night. Because it'd be three or four theaters, and they have double, triple features, and we go from one to the next to the next. Right on. Watching kung fu movies all day long, and I just fell in love with Bruce Lee. Wanted to do kung fu, you know. Yeah. Yeah. What was your favorite Bruce Lee movie? Well, um, Into the Dragon. I mean, I've seen all those movies I've seen in the theater. So you know, imagine being and seeing them right in front of your face. You know, I've seen Fearless Hyena in the theater. What? and yeah, it's all of those movies. So, you know, when you come up and you're like living there, you're right there with the popcorn and everything else. It's like, you're, you're like, I, I can do that. I can, I know I can do it. Yeah. And my mother actually got, our, me and my brother, we were all put into different things. My brother actually was put into dance. Oh, okay. He, yeah, he did, he did several Broadway shows. Uh, wow. Um, 
back in the day. And uh, now he lives in Alabama. But um, but yeah, he did tap dance kid and sophisticated ladies and a couple of other uh, major Broadway shows. Of course, now he did that as well. Mm -hmm. And um, by me going to New York, I would go to New York and see him. So I was interacting. I was around all types of stars all the time. Sure. I I got to meet Gregory Hines, uh, um, the Nicholas Brothers, Harold Nicholas, uh, mm -hmm. Phyllis Hines, all of these famous um, people. So it made me want to strive for something great, you know. And uh, when I got involved in the martial arts, I started in Taekwondo. Cool. And, uh, the same school, Kim School. And then after that, uh, I got my black belt uh, when I was 12, and then I started Kung Fu. Ah. And then that change you know, okay you know. yeah it helps that you had a brother so you have like a built-in sparring partner yes we're yeah. brothers of part, you know they, they beat you up and then you know you learn things yep. you know, i see you and your brother you got like to do great things you know what i'm saying you know mm -hmm. but you know a best friend then you know at the same time you know you go through so many tumultuous things but you still grow together so that's the main thing oh yeah it's funny uh, yeah. you're the younger brother yeah, I'm the young. So I'm. I, what's the age difference between you two? Uh well, actually, he was born in '61. I was born in '69, so it's eight years difference. Oh wow! Yeah, I was a baby. Okay, so you had to learn how to fight. Yeah, he had a huge head start. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely, definitely. My brother's two years younger than me, and so we oh. were around the same size. And then he got taller than me, and so I learned to fight bigger opponents pretty quickly. <laughs> because when he, he went from my younger brother to my taller brother. And now I'm like, it doesn't matter how tall you are when you're on your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know. When I saw a picture of you, I'm like, wow, he's, he is bigger and taller. So, oh. Yeah, <laughs> that's my I, little I, brother. <laughs> and when, did it, when did it change? It was like, oh, dude. Point, you were taller, and the next time you turn around, like, damn, he's getting taller than me. That's how it felt. I went to sleep one day, and then he's just bigger. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> He taught me a valuable lesson, though. He taught me to use my surroundings. I remember I was, I think I was 12. I was about 12, so he was 10. And he was mm -hmm. already getting taller than me. And I was like, mm -hmm. oh, no. And we were fighting one time, and we were in my room and whatever. And he got on top of me, and he had, like, his hands around my neck, you know, as brothers do. Yeah. And uh, I have this really fun thing called asthma. And so <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to lose, but we're right next to the wall of our room. And I was like, yeah. huh, huh, huh. And we're looking. And I was able to get enough force to grab his head and just smash it into the wall. He got dazed and I won. And I was like, a valuable lesson as a small child. <laughs> Use your surroundings. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. That's how you, you came up really good with using your fight scene. You know, I was yeah. like, wow. You know, use your surroundings as well. Exactly. Yeah. You have to. You mm -hmm. know, that's the yeah. thing. And in real life, that's the other thing. In real life. There's everything at your disposal. And, you know, you're not on a padded gym with air conditioning when it usually goes south for real. So it's like... Yeah. And then real price, anything can happen. So you got to use what you can use to get out of the situation. Mm -hmm. Very important. What made you want to do Kung Fu after you'd already gotten your black belt in Taekwondo? Did you feel like you'd you'd won and now to move to another thing? Yeah, well, you know, I like I said, I, the first thing, my first love was going to those little features and seeing Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. And in our town, you know, really wasn't any kung fu schools and stuff, but it was only like taekwondo or karate. But sure. it, when we were we were doing martial arts, I think I was a brown belt, and my one of my buddies came. And he said, "Man, that's a kung fu school over in, like, over in Terrytown." I said, "What?" He said, "Wow." So we, you know, we rode by and we looked inside and stuff, and uh, I, you know, you could see the people in there, and it, it, the movement was different, the way they did stuff. And then it comes out that it was a real system because they had a brochure where you can take a brochure. And I took a brochure and read it. And I was like, wow. So, you know, but one thing about me is that I had to at least get my black belt before I was going to move to somewhere else. But sure. Once I got that, and I was like, okay, you know what? Now I'm ready to do Kung Fu. So and that's how I got involved into it. So. Okay. I like that. I like that you had the commitment where you're like, I'm going to yeah. finish this thing first and then move to the other thing. Yes, a lot yes. of people don't do that. A lot of people do to finish something that you start. It's a skill that a lot of people I find don't have. A lot of people start a lot of things, but they never finish it. Yes. yes. And you had that from a young age. Was that something that like you learned from your parents or you just had that innate in you? Uh, that, that was that was actually something that I always wanted to do. I mean, almost mostly all the systems of martial arts that I learned, I pretty much got to certificate. I got certificates in all the styles that I trained in. So. Yeah. 
So that's the main thing. If I feel like you're going to do it, you need to really represent it and do it the right way. Yeah. I dibbling and dabbling. And I have dab, dibbling and dabbling in other arts, but I haven't been in one area long enough. Like I did kind of wear it for a little bit, but I was in, in the area long enough to continue. But if I pretty much decided I'm going to focus, I'm going to focus, I really want to learn it, I'm going to try to go as far as I can to learn, learn as much as I can. I'm the same way. I, I, I have two settings. I'm either 100% invested or entirely apathetic. Like I either don't care at all or I care the most. I don't know what that is. I'm just wired that way. Yeah, yeah, well, I can tell. I can tell. You know, when we first saw you and, uh, you know, and everybody else in the room, you had that light, you know, and I yeah. was like, hey, this guy here, I said, you know, right. I said, man, you know, we were talking about doing short films. I said, this is the guy, you know, you'd be really good for doing some you know, short stuff with us because of the way your, your whole attitude of approaching something and making it conscious, making it yours. Yeah. You know, some people can do stuff, same thing with any type of art, art or acting, anything else. You can act and want to act like someone else, but when you can take it and make it your own, that's what makes it special. You know what I'm saying? Time and determination to make it your own. Yeah, it does. Because you have to come into your own. You know, that's yeah. like speaking of Bruce Lee, he's one of those people that's like, there is no one style better than another. They're only good mm -hmm. martial artists. So like there could be someone who's great at one thing that isn't as good as the other thing. You're right. You know, it's a personal journey. You're right. You're right. And most of the time when people have that type of thing happens, it's normally you have a, a down period. Something bad has to happen mm -hmm. to make you decide that, you know what? This is never going to happen to me again. I'm going to mold myself. I'm going to become something completely different from what everybody else sees. Yeah. That's the truth. Out of, that's what they say. Out of the darkness comes the light. Uh -huh. periods for the light to come out. True. It also yeah. gives you that perspective. You know, mm -hmm. you can't have gratitude unless you've been through something to show that you didn't have it. You know, the people who enjoy food the most are the ones who are hungry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you find, because I know Taekwondo is very much, it's a lot of, it's a lot of kicking. It's a lot of when you're competing, it's a lot of point system and stuff. How did you like Kung Fu when you started it? Because it's a pretty different style. Yeah. Well, you know, the system that I learned, luckily, mm -hmm. it was, it was a praying mantis. It was called Wallon Tim Toy. Praying Mantis. And the cool. wild was um, the, the grandmaster of the system, his name was Lee Kwan mm -hmm. And his family style was Tem Toy. There was a movie called Tem Toy by 12 Kicks. The thing about uh, Tem Toy, the Tem Toy style is a kicking system. So oh. that was his family style. His father taught him that system. So once he mastered that system, his father said, okay, you know what, you're good with your legs. He said, now I'm going to take you to learn hands. So he took him to a monastery. And while I'm was, it was in the dense forest. So it was a dense forest. And at that time, that time in China, China was turbulent. So a lot of the Shaolin monks, a lot of temple, martial arts temples was burnt down, but mm -hmm. Shaolin monks were still opening up schools. So this temple was still run by a Shaolin monk, but it was wow. in the woods. This monk practiced praying mantis hand techniques. So he yeah. So when I started learning while I'm, I realized, wow, they got kicks too. And that actually, and me knowing Taekwondo enhanced my uh kung fu because you know some uh kung fu guys they do kicks but it's not the same you know what right. I'm saying? oh yeah with taekwondo it gave me that extra oomph to actually you know make my kicks snap more and more power and mm -hmm. that enhanced my, my, my kung fu training you know what I'm saying? oh so you already had like a foundation essentially to build onto and then you just added technique on top of it yeah oh that's pretty cool yeah, yeah. okay so what, how many different, because I know you do a lot of like animal styles. How many different animal style Kung Fu do you know? Well, uh, I was able to learn from my teacher, um, like I said, the praying mantis, uh, temporary system. Mm -hmm. But while we were training with him, he would bring other masters for us to learn because he was a famous wow. master, Chan Poi. Yeah. Um, you know, most people don't know, know about him. He's well renowned, but he also had his friends who were other grandmasters. They would come to the school. So I would learn, like, I learned Choi Le Phut. Choi Le Phut is actually a combination of a Buddha's palm fist, a lot of panther, and an uh, elephant trunk and horse style. Oh, but cool. that's Choi Le Phut. But then I ended up, when I had my school in Richmond, I had this guy come into my school. His name was Chow Lee Hong. And he was looking to teach martial arts. And he was from Beijing. And when he, I said, you know what? You can teach in my school. And when I saw how good he was, I was like, look, you don't have to pay me any rent. You know what I'm saying? I said, sure. let me learn from you. So 
I ended up learning from him, and he did five animal eight method style called Wusi Mapa. Cool. So I learned that system as well. So that's a five animal system. That's tiger, crane, leopard, snake, and dragon system. So yeah. and then I also do Filipino martial arts. I trained with uh, Ralph uh, Guru um, Guru Ralphino Pambun and the Pambun Arnis system. So wow. yeah. So. Do you ever think back on that with like you're a kid, you're going to these double features, you love these kung fu movies, and then all of a sudden you're living a kung fu movie, having a grandmaster from China in your school and you're learning under him? Like, how cool is that? Yeah, it was cool. It was awesome. I I, uh, I never expected it would happen the way it did. I mean, you know, and I really like it got to the point where my master, when I first met him, he wanted me to come and live at the temple with his nephews and train with them. Yeah. So uh, I told my dad, I said, I really want to do it. And um, I got a job cutting grass for the summer. There you go. The amount of money I had, and he's like, you know what? I mean, he started taking me down to Florida. He loved NASCAR, so he would yeah. go to Daytona to see the races, and he would drop me off at the temple, and I would go Perfect. and train. Then when I graduated high school, Master Chance said, come and live. And I went down to the temple, and I lived down there, and I trained. And so wow. I trained for like four or five years and it, it was really awesome you know and like i said you have your ups and your downs and i became, the top, I became the top student in the school and uh you know then that's when a lot of the trouble started changing things started changing but right uh, it was great i mean i can't complain i learned so many things to learn from um a grandmaster to learn the ancient cultural ways about history, philosophy, uh, herbology, yeah. um, science, and all of that stuff. It was it was great. It was a great. I would never change my experience for anything. You know? Yeah. Uh, and I got to meet a lot of great people, you know? Yeah. Build out that sort of family that you have, you know, in those yeah. sort of environments when you're bonding by uh, uh, fists. You know, <laughs> yeah, um, you know, uh, uh, uh what is it? I was say Master Ryan Watson, yeah, he, he to the school. I was 18 at the time and I was teaching classes, he was 14, but he came from Colorado and he did Kempo, yeah. And so, you know, but he was he was looking for animal system and he came and he was doing little Kempo techniques. And I saw him and said, Man, you know what? You want to be really, really good one day. And he looked at me and he smiled, you know, and that's when I, you know, ended up going back to Richmond and I came back, but. He by the time I came back, he was 16, 17 years old and he was rocking. He was doing his thing. So wow. yeah, we ended up hooking up and we ended up uh, like we would do Master Chen would do line dances for Chinese mm -hmm. New Year. And me and Ryan, we would uh we call ourselves he was uh white lightning and I was black magic, black magic, <laughs> white lightning. And we did white scenes. So we used to look at but during that time that was when Jackie Chan was really popular. Mm -hmm. So uh, all the movies like Dragon, uh what was it, uh Mina Express, uh, um, Dragons Forever, all mm -hmm. the movies. We were emulating those fight scenes and we do those fight scenes over and over again. And we got to be so good that we actually got a job working at an Asian dinner show called Asian Dimension. Oh, cool. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, uh, it was funny when we went there to go audition for Asian Adventure because they wanted Asian fighters, Asian fight scenes. And me and Ryan go there and the guys are like, you know what? guys are American. He says, we have Asian people. He says, but y'all better than all the Asians that's been here. Right. And says, you know what? You wear, you can wear ninja masks. You wear ninja masks. We're making ninjas. And we became ninjas and we used to fight at the dinner show. It was an Asian dinner show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. See, that's another thing with like, uh, with demonstrations, you know, and you're doing these sort of things, there is a performative element to it. So that's why yeah. I find that a lot of people that like, are in stunts for movies and TV, a lot of them have like a big time competitive martial arts background because you're putting on these demonstrations, which is a performance. Yes. You know, so I, I love that you guys met at a temple. That's pretty cool. Yes. Yes. That's how you know, said. right? When you find those kindred yeah. spirits, you're like, oh, we're made of the same stuff. We should, we should hang out for a little bit. And then yeah. you do so well that you start opening doors. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. That was it. <sighs> Yeah, that's we, we I've known him for a very long time. We go back many, many years. But you know, I I I ended up having like I had I got married early, I had children and stuff, and then you know, he moved out to LA but he was still doing his thing. And uh, you know, and we decided to stay in contact and we would meet sometimes in Orlando. Actually I flew up to LA a couple of times and work with him too. That was when he was like 
87 11 after he did 300. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, like I said, but we still got some big things in, in, in place that we're trying to do, you know, and just making it happen. That's it, you know. Hell yeah. Still kicking, yeah. literally yeah. and figuratively. True. 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 <laughs> So when did you compete in China? I remember I read somewhere that you won gold in China. When did that happen? Oh, uh, that was in 93. 93. Okay. How old were you? Uh, I was 24. I went to, we went, we went to the uh, Shaolin Jane Joe competition. Whoa. And um, it was in, it was actually about maybe a few miles from Shaolin Temple itself. Oh. And uh, we went there and we were able to uh, compete. And um, I was actually able to beat the national champion from Shaolin, you know. Hell and, yeah, uh, you did. Yeah, yeah, and um, me and also my kung fu brother Troy Parvizago, he did San Chao. He won San Chao, and I and I won. Uh, you know, and I was the first American ever to uh, do that. That I was, yeah. you know, I was in all the newspapers and and um, magazines. I had people, you know, because they couldn't believe that American could come over and actually beat a national champion from China. So Yeah, <laughs> I that, bet. You know, it was, yeah, it was pretty hype. It was, it was hype at that time. I had a good time. Dude. Were you nervous? Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> before we before I competed, we had food. And like we had food every day and we had meat, but you know, everybody always said that, you know, beef is scarce, but we had meat every day. Sure. But that morning, we was eating breakfast, and while we was eating, my stomach just swelled up before the tournament. It just swelled up and got really big, like almost like oh, no. what is going on? With this? <laughs> I had, like stomach virus, and I had to go to the toilet, man, and oh no, and then go out there and compete. But I still went out there, and then I and I won. But it was just like it was it was a lot of it was a lot going on. It was a lot. <laughs> that was unique, you know. <laughs> nothing's free tracy nothing is free <laughs> yeah but um but no we, but we had a great time it was excellent and uh you know i can't i wouldn't turn that expression or anything Damn. At all. i love that this is kind of like an example of the law of equivalent exchange you know it's like <laughs> you have to earn all this and go there and get sick right before but because of this you got the magazines and newspapers and recognition of the masters around you but you know that's the other side they don't tell you about it's like he was sick at the time like that makes it even cooler <laughs> if you went over and you won gold in the homeland that's pretty cool if you did it sick that's even cooler you know <laughs> man so when did you decide to teach because it's one thing to learn something and to dedicate yourself to learning it but it's another to want to carry it on when did that it's happen um, uh, I actually started teaching, um, at an early age. Um, mm -hmm. I had a school that I was like, went back to Richmond and I opened up a school when I was 19. Mm -hmm. And this was at the time still me being 19. I knew that I still needed to, uh, enhance my skills, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Because I, I, it was, I knew I wasn't good enough, you know, yeah. I, I heard different cats that will come down because where I was at in Richmond, this is when a lot of people were coming from New York. And I met a couple of cats that was unbelievable. Like this guy came in my school one time. He had these long fingernails. Ooh. And he was like, Yeah, I uh, you know, I lived in a Chinese restaurant and I grew up with these uh, these uh, this family. And he says, I was a waiter and I would have pain. And he says, But they taught me this style. I said, What style did you learn? He said, I learned snake style. I said, Snake. I was like, wow. So he started doing like the techniques. And then this guy with these long fingernails, he grabs the floor and squeezes the floor and his nails bit back and then he lifts his body up off the ground. Oh. And I was like, wow. Like, and he got up and started and I was like, okay, he's, I said, he's really good. And you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. never anybody fingernails do that. So I was like, man, he was like, you know, so I met him, I met a Southern Prime Minister guy and then I was like, you know what? I think I need to get a little bit better. <laughs> sure, right? <laughs> that's possible. <laughs> so then uh, that's when I went back to Florida, and that's when I really started getting serious into the, um, the Shaolin training. Like, I, it's, it's, it's another way. It's like um, Zen mm -hmm. Buddhism, okay? 
Zen Buddhism is based on the physical aspect of passing pain. Right. You know, you have to, your mind has to go past that pain state to achieve the nirvanal status of reaching the highest level of martial right. arts. So once you're able to do that and, and focus your chi and your meditation doing that, then you can understand that what it is. Because even when you train, like they call it the runner's high, when mm -hmm. you can't run a marathon and all of a sudden you reach that peak where you don't think you can go anymore, but yeah. you go boom. And uh -huh. it's like you feel it as a natural high. And it's yeah. a natural buzz. That's the state of nirvana. So it's like I was able to get to that level. And you know, when I so when I still do stuff, I still can feel and want to do and train in that form. And that do you remember the first time it hit? Like the first time you reached that level, you're like, I've yeah, achieved it. I, well, you know, I went to go compete in a tournament in uh, Houston, and this was in ninety, I think ninety two, with my master. And I went to him because I, I I couldn't really win. I was like, why am I not winning? And he said, if you're not winning, he said, this is what you got to do. He had these profile poles in the back of the temple. And these poles are like stakes in the ground. They're all different levels. And he jumped on a boom, 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 boom. He says, he says, you really want to get good? He says, you got to stand on these poles every day for an hour. And he gave, he went through this whole combination of drills of meditation and chi. And, you know, sometimes when a teacher tells you something, okay, you can listen to it or you take it to heart and you do it. Right. So every day for a year, I would jog like before the school opened. School they opened up at like eight. I would get there like an hour, hour and a half early, get on those poles, and I would train. Um, I, I'm going to be able to sing you and show you some uh, of the pictures and stuff that I have. Yeah, yeah actually, please. Yeah, I'll send you some stuff. So when you know we talk, then you can actually can show some pictures as well. Yeah. And I was able to get on those poles every day, and I and, and just train and get my energy to the level where. I actually got mad one day, and I went to kick. <laughs> I had a car. I had a, a 65 Mustang at the time. And I put my footprint, like the whole footprint, like was around in the car from the power that I got. But wow. once I got to that level of training, then when I compete, no one could beat me. Because I, I was like, then I saw the level of what it was that he was trying to convey to me. And yeah. Then, if you really want to focus, you got to, like I said, take your mind past levels that regular people can't see. But when you can do that, that's when, you know, the diamond and the rough will appear. You know, so that's sure. we hit the gold mine. And that's exactly, you know, what it is, you know. So that's what that applies to anybody in life. You know, if you work hard, you put, go as hard as you can and dedicate yourself. If you can reach that plateau, no matter what nobody say, no matter where you at right now, no matter how things look, you can reach that level. So that's what I want everybody to do. Yeah. See that yeah. I, that makes a lot of sense because I I've seen your demonstrations. It was like in '92 maybe, and it was yeah. you did a demo of a drunken style, and then mm -hmm. there was a spear, and then mm -hmm. a nine ring sword. I watched all yeah. three of them, and the thing I kept thinking of was your drunken style the leg strength required for what you were doing. You went from completely flat to up on your toes without using your hands. I'm like, this is insane. Like just the physicalness. I just kept thinking, how do you do that with your legs? Where do you get that strength? But now I see it's a year standing on poles. Yes. That's pretty cool, Tracy. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yes. Just to see the results of that kind of training. Because that's the other thing is like when you're doing it, when you're doing anything that's training wise in any discipline, you don't really see progress for a while until you look back. And a lot of people will get discouraged on the path because they're like, oh, I'm not better yet. It's about doing the laps. It's about actually doing the work and then one day you'll be able to just do the thing. Yeah. But I find if people are focused on progress, they tend to not beg very much. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. just do the work. You know, I, yeah. I always say that like, I describe life as like, I just swim laps. I don't count them. It's just yeah. about doing the work and then one day I'm going to look back and be like, oh, wow, I've done this for a while and I'm pretty good at this. But if I'm thinking about it too much, then I'm going to get tired because I'm just, oh God, I'm still swimming. You know, it's like, just swim. And then you'll get there, you know? You're right. That is so true. That's what's so true about life is that, you know, when you don't think that you're there and you're right at the end. And some people quit right before they hit that. Yeah. That before they hit that tunnel and you think it's over, I'm just going to fall, let go. 
and it's right that you could have made it if you would have took that extra step. And that's that's exactly what life is about when it, when when you're achieving things. You know what I'm saying? So you can't give up with anything, no matter how it looks. It's not all about how it looks. It's yeah. by your determination, your faith, and your faith will always bring you through in the end. Yeah. Are you are you good at learning? Like, is that something that you had? Because a lot of people aren't good at being bad at something first, you know, yeah. to give themselves the kind of leeway to learn. Are you good no, at that? No, I mean, it's, you know what? It's about doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And yeah. doing it you know? um, one thing that I've always learned, even from him, is that you need to do everything at least three times. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, have a train. It would be three, six, and nine. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it would be, you know, I'm going to do this three times a day, you know, because it takes three times for something to really set into your mind. That's one thing that he always taught me. So when I train and I work out, I always practice three times. I always make sure this and that. And then if I want to go harder than that, I will go three, six, or nine. Sure. And um, you, you can always, like I said, achieve and, and get it. But I would not, a lot of things I wouldn't catch at first because it's very hard. Sure. But I, you had to, you had to just put it in, put the time in, and make it happen. You know, and, and you can achieve. It. You just have that determination where it's yes. like, even if I'm not good at this right now, it doesn't mean I'm not going to be good. And you exactly. kind of allow yourself that sort of leeway. Exactly. That makes sense. That That's makes it. sense. That's wow. It. See, I, I always think I, I always say I'll try most things twice because you'll try a food. And be like, oh, I don't like this food. And there'll always be someone who's like, well, you haven't had my version of that. And I'm like, yes. okay, you know what? That's fair. That's fair. So what I'm going to do is say that your version is the best version of this thing. So I'll try it again. But if I don't like it, I'm never doing it again. <laughs> it's like, I don't like mayonnaise, all right? It's just a thing I don't have. It's like, well, you haven't tried mine. You're right. Okay. I'll give it a shot. This is terrible. You know? <laughs> yeah. I live my life. <laughs> So when, when did entertainment start then? Because you're competing, you're teaching in the Kung Fu school, you're so ingrained in this martial arts world. And then you, it, is it linking up with Ryan? You guys are like, let's go do this thing. Was the dinner theater the first, like? Yeah, the dinner theater, yeah. us, you no, know, like I said, we, when we were with uh, Master Chan and we were uh, Black Magic and White Lightning, and we mm-hmm. would always go everywhere and do fight scenes. Then um, I remember when <laughs> Ryan came in because I was staying in the dormitory and I would lay on the couch and, and, and Les Brown was on the TV. Les Brown, motivational speaker. Mm-hmm. And he came in and said, man, this is my dad wants me to go to college, man. I don't know what we're doing. But I said, I said, and I said, you know what? I said, you, you know, we're really good at what we do. I said, don't listen to Les Brown. I said, man, you know, we're, we're, I said, we're good at fight scenes. I said, why don't we go and try to do fight scenes? He said, you know what? They used to be on, on in Orlando. There was a on Colonial Drive. There was a, a, a martial arts supply, uh, store called East Coast Martial Arts. Mm-hmm. And Ryan was like, you know what? I was in East Coast Martial Arts, and he said I saw that they had an audition for um, this Asian dinner show. I said, you know what? I said, Ryan, let's go, man. We got these fight scenes. Let's go. And so we found what it was, and that's when we went. And you know what? Huh. Five, five was there with oh. his guy. And Five was actually working <laughs> at the Asian. This is how we all met. Yeah, Five was working at the Asian um, Adventure Dinner Show, and he was there. But then, oh. we came, and so once we came to audition, and the guy saw how how do he said, "Man, he said we've had Asian guys come in all day." And he says, "You know, but you guys, he says y- y'all working, but he says y'all better than all the Asian guys." And then he was like, <laughs> he so. You guys are hurt. He said, we just got to figure out what to do. He's like, you know, because I'm black. And right. Black. <laughs> and I was like, and then he's like, okay, you know what? Uh, he says, you can wear a ninja mask. And we, so we were the ninjas. Sure. But I ended up losing the job. Oh, no. So Fry, Fry and his guys is mad. So when we went to go do fight scenes. When we first got there, Fry would be sitting out in orders with his guys and stuff. And, and, and then we always ended up meeting. No matter where we went, we went to where Fry was there and his guys, because he had his own stunt crew and then he was doing back then. Yeah. So, to make a long story short, after I won the, the tournaments in uh, China, Mm-hmm. I had a, a guy in the school, he's like, you know, Tracy, and Master Chan was like, you know, you're my only student that I would allow to open up another school in Orlando. So on the west side of Orlando, I had um, a martial arts school right on High Wasi. And oh, so cool. most of my students that came in that school from the university. And just oh. we found out that WMAC Masters was filming. Yeah. 
And so, and then we found out that Pat Johnson, mm -hmm. who was a choreographer for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Pride of Kid, oh, yeah. that, was the director for the WMAC Masters. Oh. And I, yeah, so that's how I found out about that. And I was like, you know what? This is the only chance that I have. I said, this is the only time that I have that I can actually make it. So yeah, my Arnie's teacher was a chef at Universal Studios. And then I had a couple of stunt performers. Because when I opened up my school, I had stunt guys from Universal coming in. So mm -hmm. I went and got me some professional headshots and resumes. And there I would you give go. them to all my students. And when they went to go work at Universal, they would drop them off to Pat Johnson. Drop them off to Pat Johnson. Drop them Smart. Off to so, you know, after a period of time, I decided that, you know what, I, I'm going to I'm gonna go, I'm going to go there. So I went there as a tour to watch, to sit in the audience with WMAC Masters. Uh -huh. And when we went there to do it, remember now, I'm listening to Les Brown, like, you, you got to take your moment. When it's your time, you got to take it. Yeah. And so the audience got up to laugh. He said, all right, everybody. We're going to leave now. We're done with watching the show. Everybody got to leave, and, and they were walking out. And when I was walking out, I jumped up under the bleachers. <laughs> and they all yes. walked out. And I stayed up under the bleachers, and I waited for, for five to ten minutes when everybody was gone. And then all it was was Pat Johnson sitting there and everybody else, and, and, and just to prove. Mm -hmm. And that's I walked from the bleachers, and I walked up. I says, I said, Master Johnson. I said, Hi. I said, hello, my name is Tracy Fleming. He said, Tracy Fleming. He says, I've been getting your headshots and resume every single day. He says, I'm happy to meet you. And I was like, I was like, and he said, he said, do you know anything about stunts and fight scenes? And I was like, no, sir. I said, but I've, I've done fight scenes. And he says, he says, well, I'll tell you this. He says, I've been seeing your resumes. I want to see how good you are. He says, you know, why don't you come by tomorrow and we're going to set up a performance for you to do an audition. And that's how I end up getting into learning the fight scenes, learning choreography. Ooh. So, you know, it's it's like, at my life, I tell you, my life has been exciting. I can make a little movie about it. People yeah. Know because when I met Pat Johnson, I, at that time, I I just, I had a tumultuous experience with my master, with Master Chan, and I got, I had to leave the school. I got kicked out, and mm -hmm. it, was, it was ugly. And, sure. uh, I had a down point in my life, but when I met Pat Johnson, and Pat Johnson admired me because um, he was like, you know what? He told his son, he says, all right, everybody here, he says, Tracy is really, really good. So he took me under his wing. He took me under his wing, and he started to show me fight scenes. He started to teach me how to move for the camera, the angles of, of everything of how was to work on stage and snap. So yeah. while we were doing WMA Masters, and we were mighty, we were only the ninjas jumping out of fighting. Oh, yeah, I've seen him. Max and Pat Johnson uh, got a call because he also choreographed Mortal Kombat, the movie. Yeah. So they were going to do Mortal Kombat, the live tour. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, he said, Tracy, he says, you know, I'm doing this. He says, do you, are you interested in doing a live tour? He says, I would like to have you work in a show. And I says, Yes, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, you know, and, and to make a long story short, that's when me and Ryan he called me up. He says, "You know what, Tracy? He says we have a big uh, thing coming to Universal because we're promoting a live tour for Mortal Kombat." He says, "I want you to choreograph the fight scenes for the show," and I, I was wow. like, what? "I couldn't believe it." I was like, it was, "It was like it was like everything was changing for me," and that's when I got Ryan Watson together. I got um, Tyrone, these other guys that mm -hmm. were working with us, and we all did um, a big demo for the Mortal Kombat live tour. And I was the choreographer for it. I have that, I have all that footage somewhere, man. I have to bring it out. But yeah, when we did that show, we got the Mortal Kombat tour, and we was able to go on tour with that show. We toured all over the U.S., and then we did a European tour. And we're listening to this when we did the European tour. Uh -huh. He. Couldn't, he couldn't go on a European tour, so he made me the choreographer for the show for the European tour. So Dude. I was the choreographer. Yes. Yes. Wow. So he took me under the wing. He showed me how to do fight scenes for the camera, and he showed me how to do fight scenes for stage. And I, I was like, you know, I, I, you know, he, when he, I, he, he passed recently. Yeah, I saw and that. I, yeah, and when I saw that he passed, it broke my heart because, you know what, you think about uh, into the dragon, the door roper, 
Yeah. Where's the dope, Robert? Like he come from behind the bush, man. He has he was the man in martial arts movies from the beginning. And like for him to take me on his wing and just teach me about choreography, it, 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 you know, I, I'm still touched by it. You know, I'm really yeah. touched. I'm really touched. Yes, yes. I love that. See, that's that drive that I was talking about. Like the fact yes. that you had the forethought to be like, just keep getting my resume and headshots to him. You know, you're just planting seeds, right? Not yes. knowing how it's going to happen. The fact mm -hmm. that you hid in the bleachers, that's amazing, dude. Like, that's that's <laughs> what separates you from everyone else. That level of, like, don't let anything stop you, including yourself. You know, because anyone else would be too nervous to talk. Like, do I just go up? They said we have to leave. You know, you're like, I'm not leaving. And then he knew because the seeds were planted. And you were right. Luck is preparation meets opportunity, right? 100%. So you've done yes. all this preparing, and then the opportunity arose. One plus one, dude. And the fact that it's World Masters, hosted by Bruce Lee's daughter. What is this full circle moment you have? Like, mm -hmm. dude, what was that like to be a part of something like that? Did you ever have to sit back and be like, Bruce Lee movies started my life trajectory, yes. and now I'm working on a show hosted by his daughter? Exactly. What? I, I, you know, I, um, you know, hey, I, I, I. I was able to meet and 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 do fight scenes and shows with all the top martial arts in the country at that time. I, I'm Carmichael Simon, um, Hakeem Austin, uh, uh, and see, they didn't know me because I was not pretty much on the NASCAR circuit or the Blue Diamond circuit, the circuit that the main American circuit that everybody knew of martial arts. Sure. I was always, I was the, on the Kung Fu Chinese side. Mm -hmm. So but when I got to meet these guys and they started seeing me, they started, they respected me because they were like, wow, this guy, he just came out of nowhere, but he's just damn right. good. And so, <laughs> you know, and, and so, and so we, we all became good friends. Larry Lamb, all of those guys, I got to meet and train with all of them and then compete against them. We competed in the honor classic. Yeah. I actually choreographed the fight scene in the honor classic in 97. Dude. We won. We won the ten grand. <laughs> we won the what? whole. Yeah, we won the honor class. Me, Ryan, and uh, uh, um, our other. Uh, we had David Douglas, um, Gary Wa, and Anthony DeMarco. And so, I mean, it's it's the footage that you know. And from what I hear, we were the trendsetters. We started the whole, you know, for for the honor classic. That's when he first started the honor classic. Yeah. And we competed against five hundred different teams to get to the top ten. And then after the top 10, then we made it to the final three. And from the final three, we won the first place. And, 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 I, that, and then at that competition, I met Chuck Norris. Chuck uh -huh. Norris came and shook my hand, you know, and um, it was it was just amazing. It was it was like I, I was able to meet so many martial arts stars and stuff. So this is this is how it all came to pass, man. You know, so yeah. Um, but I've, like I said, I'm real, I'm going to send you some footage. I'm going to send some stuff to you so you can check it out, and then you can see, you can correlate everything to what I'm, what I'm saying, you know, to you. So. Yeah, please, dude. Uh, oh man, I I saw, I I watched a thing that you did. It was on it was on like a local news channel. It was about the uh, Mortal Kombat, and it mm -hmm. was a scene with you as Cabal and Ryan as Sub Zero, and you did like a a minute long fight scene on the news, and you're like flipping and rolling and whatever. Like, it was yeah. so cool. I, could you see in that mask? You, you know what? I had to get used to that. And, yeah. the, breathing, and the breathing was the hard part, you know? Yeah, you I bet. It, but, you know, I, I, I had to I pull it off. I was able to do it, you know? And, yeah, you and did. that's how I started growing my... Because before I didn't have dreads, and I had to, you know, for the cabal, the cabal has dreads. So I had to do braids and dreads and, and stuff. And that's how, you know, I started getting this hairstyle and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So, but um, but yeah, Cabal was awesome and sub sub zero. But see that fight scene me and Ryan did, that was one of the fight scenes we did when we were Black Magic and White Lightning for Master Chan. Ah. So <laughs> and staff, it looks like a um a long staff with a with an end and it's a long like nun truck, but we call it a Daiso G. Got and it. I had shield and sword. Yes. And so we did it's called Daiso G versus Shield. And cool. so and, and um that's that was the routine that we did. That was so fun. Yeah. Did you find because you came from like an actual real fighting martial arts background with Kung Fu and Taekwondo and this like this had a fight for real versus mm -hmm. fighting for screen and stage. Was there a learning curve for you to go from real fighting to fake fighting? No, no. I mean, you know, the thing about you, you do have to have 
some understanding. Of, you got to know real fighting in order to make it look real. Uh-huh. You know, one, okay. One thing, one thing about Master Chan, I mean, not Master Chan, but learning from uh, uh, Pat Johnson, mm-hmm. it's certain moves with certain angles that you have to hit. Just like when we did our fight scene. So it was like, yes. when you're at a certain angle, you have to kick the person to the body. You got to make it look real because if you don't do that, it's not going to sell. Everything mm. is about selling for the film. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Man, you've seen some goofy fight scenes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> We've all seen really good, like, man, that was cheesy. Right. You know, it's like, you know, but, but then you see the real ones like Ray from Redemption or you see Jack Chan. And those guys, you might get hurt in the fight scene. You might get oh, a yeah. or something, but it's going to sell. It's going to look awesome. You know, I had Hakeem Austin punch me in my chest. And, you know, he's a top kickboxer. No one kickboxer. And he almost cracked my sternum, man. I, <laughs> I, I, was, I was walking around breathing like this for almost like a month, month and a half. And this guy, my chest, you know, but I mean, it, it happens. It happens. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You definitely. hear about like Sammo Hung is like super famous for just beating the mess out of stuntmen. <laughs> yeah, you know Sammo Hung is uh is Jackie Chan's uh older kung fu brother. He taught Jackie in you He was their older kung fu brother to teach them. So you know it's funny. You know you look at like I said Jackie Chan. He had, I mean Sammo Hung. He has that look. Oh yeah. You would expect for him to be as no. bad as he is. <laughs> yeah. He's he's very agile for a man his shape. <laughs> that man is quick on his toes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like the yeah. real Kung Fu Panda. Like, don't yeah. mess with that. And he's so strong. Yeah. yeah. Very powerful. Very powerful. So. I'm with I'm with you there that there is, you know, you hear it all the time working with Donnie Yen, working with any of these big martial arts people. It's like there accidents happen. You know, you're in the heat of the moment, you're trying to sell it. I mm-hmm. did I did a uh, another workshop with Ryan back in February, January, February. Yeah, he told me about that. It was all hand to hand. Mm-hmm. And I oversold. I worked with Dave. So Dave and I got paired up because he wanted to put the actors together. Yeah. And we're selling this thing. And he, he went to throw a punch and I oversold it and my arm went back. And I actually have a scar on my hand Ooh, because is- my my hand hit the lens hood. It's like, ah, just real quick. <laughs> and, slice it. Slice it. Oh, and wow. I didn't notice until it was over. I was like, because you know, you you're in and you get done. So I go and I sit back down and I'm like, oh man, my hand hurts and there's blood everywhere. And I was like, oops. So I'm like, I'm keep going. <laughs> man, it, it happens. It happens yeah. all the time. It it's got a good story time. to it, you know. Now when I'm done, I'm like, yeah, I did that doing stunts. Tell your friends, you know. <laughs> 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 How'd you get involved with the Untouchable? Because it's a video game, and it's you. You're the Untouchable. It's your face. It's your body. And it's at a time when that wasn't like as prominent, where the actor is his face in the game. Yeah, I am. Um, I uh, was living in DC at that time. But this is right. I, well, I was in between tour, so uh-huh. I, I was on tour with uh, the, the the world the, the the tour, the US tour, and then we was on break. We was going to go on the um, European tour. But I uh, came to DC and we had this guy call us up and he's doing a video game and, and he was using all the like top martial artists and he was like, you know, Tracy, he says, you know, I would like to have you, you know, come and do the game, you know. So, you know, and when we talked, he was like, you know, you gotta have, you know, nice extension and this and that, and you know, and unique movements. So everybody had to have their own unique moves. And then to make the whole thing up, I didn't realize by my techniques and what I was doing that I was actually becoming the untouchable. So, oh, you didn't even know? <laughs> no, I didn't know because it, it, it wasn't until it came out and I saw the video game and then I'm in the middle and I'm like, what is this? And then everybody was saying that, hey, you know, if you use Lee Lee Kwai, he's the he's the guy that, you know, he hits everybody quickly, he moves fast and this stuff. And I was, I was impressed. But I was using eight mortar guys. I was using drunken style. I was using leopard style. You know stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, I never knew. I never knew. And then then it, you know. But a lot of people told me they they really enjoyed the game. You know, and that was right before it went into the whole three D. It's still like I think it was two D or whatever. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's still, like a Street Fighter kind of yeah, Street Fighter thing. type game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was it was it was cool. I I. I <laughs> You know, I, you know, certain things that happen that I find out, and 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 people are, you know, I just hear these things, and then I'm like, wow, I didn't know that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but that looks like me. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. Wow. Yeah, you've done some research on me. That's oh awesome. yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah, th this is how I operate. I do research before I even ask someone to come on my show. I do like three weeks of like deep dive, which I knew yeah. I knew from the moment we met. I was like, I would like to get to know this man better. But I was like, all right, what is, what is he doing? Let's see. Because I already know he's cool, but I want to know why. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they call me, you know, when I went to China and I wanted to go with him, they call me Lee Kwai. That's my son's name. Oh. And Lee Kwai is actually, he was a black whirlwind. It was a novel called Water Margin. That yeah, was uh, actually took place. It was written on the Song Dynasty. But Lee Kwai was, uh, uh, he was untouchable. They said he would run in the battle. Before he would go to battle, he'd take off all his clothes and just a loincloth. He would have two axes. And he'll run in. And they said <laughs> heads and legs would fly everywhere. And then when he was done fighting the battle, he would be covered in blood. And he would just jump in the water, wash off, and get back up. You know what I'm saying? So they called him Lee Kwai the Black Whirlwind. Because, you know, in China, back during those times, they had all different, you know, there was dark Asians and light Asians oh, and all yeah. of that. Stuff. So, you know, and so, he, but he was Lee Kwai, the black whirlwind. And so when I won and competed in China, they called me Lee Kwai, the whirlwind. I was like, what? What? So, you know, and that's why in The Untouchable, you see that black tornado. Because yeah. that's the, world, the black whirlwind. Oh, yeah. so, that's cool. So you yeah. even had like you got to have like creative input on the character as well in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, yeah, I call myself that too, you know. And, and then my son, then that's why he's Lee Kwai. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. yeah. So. Wow. So what, in your opinion, having done this for so long, like, what do you think makes a good fight scene? Because you won at, at, out of a group of hundreds. Like, what do you think it's, it was? What are the What are the ingredients that make a good fight scene? Uh, it's the whole the, the mix up. It's, it's, yeah. it's, um, my style that I call now is called Wu 360. Okay. Uh -huh. one, one thing that I learned is that Wu means martial arts, and 360 is the full circle. Ooh. So it's like you cannot be in one concept focused on one art. You, you master the arts that you master, but at the same time, you got to know a little bit about everybody, sure. about every single art. But then when you fight, because you don't know what you're gonna deal with. Um, right. When I would do Arnis, we would comp we would be in class. It would be an MMA fighter, a Thai boxer, a Shotokan master, an Aikido master, me, Kung Fu guy. And so when we would do routines and fights or actually drills, you would be in a circle, or you'd be like everybody in a single file line, and they're all coming to attack. You. So when they're attacking you, one and they're all throwing something different. Sure. And you don't know how to be able to mold and change and have the flow, understand what jujitsu is about. So he doesn't grab your back. He doesn't control your neck to mm -hmm. get the lock. Sure. I, got, I had a kung fu school and I had a jujitsu fighter come in and try to challenge me, you know. And um, this is when I was training on East. So I was training with MMA guys and I was training with jujitsu guys. And I know the main concept is don't let them get to where they can scroll you. Don't let them control your neck. Mm -hmm. Don't let them get your back, okay? Yep. And so we have different techniques that we learn in our niece from the grappling on learning not to get on there. So his whole position was he was trying to get me get my neck. Every uh -huh. time he gets my neck, I know how to flow around. Then he try to go down and sprawl. So you know when he when he's gonna take try to take you how to sprawl. And then he was trying to get my back. When he couldn't do those three things, he couldn't. He 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 stopped because he was like. Okay, sir. You know, he right. says, <laughs> I tried. He said, okay. I tried and I did, you know, and I was like, good. And he came into my school, in my class. It was really like, it was a kung fu movie. Like, hey, you know, I'm, I do jujitsu. One time I said, listen, man, I said, you know, come back later when my class is over. And, you know, da 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 da. And, this yeah. was, and he didn't get me, and that and worked out pretty good. So, but. <laughs> It happens, man. Th things happen in life, and you know you have to you have to just grow, you know. And not everybody's perfect, you know. And sure. the main thing is, is to have an understanding of every single thing, because there's some boxers out here that are extremely good. Mm -hmm. So you got to know a little bit about boxing. There's some there's some Thai Taekwondo guys, Thai guys. My thing in life is you respect everybody. You yeah. respect every person because you don't know what the next man knows. You just give them, True. you know, man, if you come in and you cocky and you, you know, you have this and that, then you still be humble. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Bruce Lee and uh, Return of Dragon. Remember, he had, he had the glasses oh, yeah. and he was the man. Oh, oh, uh huh. You know, you just be <laughs> humble. You be humble. You know, that's, that's how you move through life. Yeah. And that yeah. sort of humility is what keeps you open to learning more because it's always the person who thinks they know everything that is right before the fall. Exactly. 
True. You know? And that's and Bruce Lee's whole thing, Jeet Kune Do, right? Use what works. Take little bits from here, little bits from there, which was novel at the time because before it was like you have your style and it's the best versus their style. It's like, well, what if your arm doesn't bend that way? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like using what works and having a rudimentary knowledge of all of it. That makes sense. That's true. That's true. And and this is this is how you know even Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, if you look at Jeet Kune Do now, you would say this is the MMA of today. Sure. The way he invented that system. Mm -hmm. You know, the only thing that I, you know, MMA is an awesome system, you know, the ground pounding, but it's just that they lost the spiritual side. They lost yeah. like, because you know, a long time ago, if you had to learn martial arts, you had to go to a temple, to a monk, and you had to learn first the discipline, the esoteric ways before you can get into trying to kill the pound. Sure. And well, you take that out, then you make it a brutal bloodbath. And and then you and you build on egos and cockiness that's that's not right. But you know, have you ever seen? Did you see um the series called The Warrior? Oh yeah, oh yeah, the one that yeah. was based so, on Bruce Lee's writings. Yes, right. Yes, uh, and, you know, and that was an awesome film. But as you can see, remember our sound when mm -hmm. he his grand his father was like, "Look, you need to learn." He says, and and what he happened? He a monk came, took yep. him away. But he said before you remember the monk. I want to learn everything. He said no. He said first yep. thing you know how to do is you need to learn how to breathe. You need to yeah. develop your feet. You need to develop, you know, and that's what you're supposed to do. That's what's missing from the MMA. Because then if yeah. you do this, you have more respect and honor for your fellow man, fellow woman. You know? yeah, yeah, I agree. That that's mm -hmm. something that like I've always been equally interested in the physical aspects of martial arts. Obviously, self defense, learning to defend yourself and those that can't. But mm -hmm. more so the honor side of it, mm -hmm. you know, yes. that it's like it it does matter how you win, I think. And it's like maintaining that sort of level where it's not barbarism, you know, for the sake of violence. Yes. It's like violence to maintain peace as opposed to violence for violence sake. Exactly. Exactly. Now that you know so many styles and have trained for so long, do you have like a personal favorite? Like obviously each one has its own applications. But like for you, we're like this one. Uh Boosting Bafa is a unique system. Yeah. I like that system a lot. Um, you know, like everything was based on like uh, the auspicious numbers, 108, like you said, 108 combinations, 108. But this system, like I said, you learn 108 techniques, even the wooden dummies, 108 different techniques on the dummy. But Boosting Bafa is 108 combinations. So oh. you learn a basic move, you just, you're doing each combination, each combination is an application. So, sure. you know, I like the system because it's a very traditional Shaolin system, mm -hmm. but that's my base. And from there, I use, I still flew into the other styles. I still do my Taekwondo. I still do uh, the uh, wall on. I do the basics. You know, you got to keep your basics up. The key to life is the foundation. Yeah. You have a strong foundation, then you can keep on doing what you got to do. And now I do yoga because oh, the, age, the age I am, you have to keep those joints flexible. Yeah. You have to to do your yoga practice it's very important you know sure if you if you know the story of shaolin uh bodhiyama came from india and he went right. to shaolin to teach the shaolin monks when he sat with the monks he, they were weak they were when he used to try to meditate when he said you guys are weak he says you guys got to learn these stretching and breathing exercises so stretching and breathing is the most key to longevity and then from there you can build off of that I like that. And body, mind, spirit kind of thing, where you keep your yes. body flexible, you keep your mind mm -hmm. flexible, you're able to learn and grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm picking up what you're laying down. Yeah, I mean, you know, man, listen, when we met, and I and I met you, mm -hmm. and I, your, your, your personality and everything else, because sometimes people look at just the outer. Mm -hmm. They don't look at the inner. Yeah. You know, and I saw that you looked at the inner more yeah. than the outer, and, that, and that's very rare. Very it rare. is, unfortunately. Because you know? life is very unique, you know, yeah. and everybody in life has a story. Even mm -hmm. the man that's on the street living in a tent. Yeah. You know, and he, he, might, you, he might be the most beautiful musician or anything, but, you know, life can deal people some 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 bad cards, man. Oh, yeah. You know? But it's, it's how you live and how you perceive it. So this is how it is. And, you know, I can tell when you sent me the podcast, I was very impressed. I was like, you know what? You know, this is a good man here. And I and I really honestly think that we will one day do a real powerful short film. Oh, you yeah. Know, maybe after this, we'll, we'll collaborate on the script. I have a script. Hell yeah, maybe I do. I do with you because, you know, I, it's the point of 
making it. And this is my, you know, the script that I have is called Skills. Ooh. And the way I wanted to do it is I wanted to have it include almost every race, every form of martial arts involved in it. Yeah. And at the same time, come to one thing, the love and peace and unity and growing and achieving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because us as a people, we have to do this. You know, we see so many bad things going on in the world and we get told this and told that. But the main thing is, is we stick like this and we grow, we can achieve. And that's, that's the happy principle. The happy principle, the happy proverb says that one day the rainbow people will come back and restore peace unto earth. And the mm-hmm. rainbow people means all colors, all races. It's not about you're black, you're, you're white, or, you know, this and that. You know, it's not about that. It's about what's inside here. Yeah. Oh, I'm right yeah. there with you, dude. I made a whole show about it. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing this show for this year will be nine years. Wow. And the one thing that I've noticed is for over 200 episodes that regardless of how different everyone is, we are all still human beings. And yes. on that, we can connect. Yes. And I just, I love it. I love it. There's something, you know, where we are more than the physical. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm a big luminous beings are we, as Yoda mm-hmm. says, you know, it's mm-hmm. like there's something else that we can connect on that human level. And mm-hmm. that's, I'm I'm seeking that all the time. I just love and it. That's like I said. When you talk about Yoda and all that, that's that's exactly because when you saw Yoda, most people are like, Yoda, who's this? This is not a <laughs> this? You know what right. I'm saying? He's the baddest one. He's the right. one that had the force. But this is the way the world is. People, like I said, you walk in and you walk past the gold and silver because you think it's over here, and yep. really, it's right over there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's right over there. It's true. That's, that's true. That said, though, on that note, do you have any Do you have any advice for like up and coming martial artists or up and coming choreographers or stunt performers or people who want to do what you do or have done? Yes. I would say that you can achieve it if you believe. You write it down, you write your goals down, you look at your goals every day, you say, okay, I can manifest and make it happen. Mm-hmm. No matter how bad things are, how bad things look. Sometimes you think the road might go this way, and really it's supposed to go over here. Yeah. So just stay focused on your craft. Make your craft what you need to make it. Remember, one brick at a time can build a pyramid. But it's yeah. one brick at a time. Okay, so if you stay to the goal, stay to the prize, you can achieve it. Oh, I love that. I love it. Dude, just like that. We've been talking for an hour. You survived, yeah. Tracy. Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> now, before I release you back into the wild, I got to ask, where can people find you online? Where can they find your stuff? Talk to me. Okay. Well, I am on Facebook. And uh, my name is Tracy Fleming. I know I'm just out there. I do have my profile on Marshall's page. I'm also on Instagram at Woo360. Uh, and um, you can also go TMF Woo. That's Woo, TMF Woo on Instagram as well. So, but I am actually going to be putting out more footage. I yeah. also I do, I do sell herbal tea as well, herbal blend to help people with their elements and stuff like that. Because my main goal is to help people heal. Yeah. We got to heal from the pain and the trauma, and we got to keep moving forward and striving to the top. That's all. Okay. I love, dude. I knew this was going to be a blast, but it was even better than I thought. Yes, man. Oh, man. What? It's so fun, dude. Thank you so much. I appreciate yes, it. Anytime. Anytime. And I will be sending you some pictures and links and stuff. You've seen quite a few, but I'll yeah, send yeah. some. I'll watch them again. Out. Don't okay. threaten me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank hey. you, sir. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show and stay up to date on new episodes, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at brianbalance.com. 
There you'll find my demos, recent projects, and other stuff I'm up to. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. As speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch. Just search The Interesting Podcast on TeePublic to pick you up some sweet gear. And if you'd like to support the show more directly and get early releases while you're at it, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Ben, Chris, Daryl, Daz, and Victor. Your support means so much to me, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.